many buttons and lose the music. So I. Yeah. It should be, right? Yes. I can't even, I don't even see the button. Yeah, I think what it is is my screen is too large. And A motion, Dale, or second a motion. We won't be able to see you. Um, so you can either enter something in the chat, but my guess is you can't even see that. you want to make beforehand so while well, we got you because otherwise janet you're going to mute us all right yeah can, I make, I, can I make a that bottom toolbar. All right. Uh, the meeting will come to order. So this is Jill Spear, Chair of the Library Board, and I'd like to welcome everyone to the virtual meeting of July 27th. Uh, because in-person attendance at public meetings is likely to increase the risk of transmission of COVID-19, this meeting is being conducted in accordance with Governor Lamont's Executive Order Number 7B, which permits municipalities to conduct public meetings virtually. Board members and some library staff are participating in this meeting by using a video conference facility. Members of the public can view the meeting live on West Hartford Community Television or on West Hartford Community Interactive Comcast Channel 5 and Frontier TV Channel 6098 or at www.whctv.org. The meeting is also being recorded for on-demand viewing, which will be available library's website. Because of the virtual format, there are some special rules 
factors that I need to cover before I begin. First, you know what? Uh, let's pause for a second. We're picking up the other, um, we're picking up West Hartford TV's um, transmission. All right, West Hartford TV. Okay, so we'll continue. Hopefully, that's I just needed West Hartford TV. We should be all set. Okay. Uh, so here's the procedures that we need. Our special procedures. First, I ask all participants to please mute your devices when you're not speaking. If you wish to be recognized, please raise your hand, and I'll call on you. If you're participating video audio only, and I do not call on you, and the debate is ending, then please unmute your phone and let me know so that I can recognize you. Janet, um, who is facilitating the meeting, will be able to unmute your phone if that's the case. Second, pursuant to Executive Order 7B, all speakers must state their name and title every time they speak. Third, because of the difficulty in tallying voice votes on video conference, I'll require that most votes be taken by roll. And in our case, we're taking all votes by roll. And finally, fourth, a reminder that if any participant has a problem with their connection, you should con immediately contact Janet Valenza, whose number you were provided earlier. She'll let me know and will recess the meeting while the problem is resolved. Mm -hmm. And this means that if the problem's significant enough that you, you can't hear or anything. If it cannot be resolved quickly, we'll ask you to call into the meeting using a phone and participate via audio only. I'll now call the roll and note the staff members who are present. David Brandwine. David Brandwine, board member present. Gail Crockett. Gail Crockett. Gail, can you unmute your phone? She is unmuted. Oh, no, there she is. Okay, now she is. Gail Crockett. Gail Crockett, present. Ann Donovan. Ann Donovan, board member, present. Kim Cohen. Let the meeting notes uh, reflect that Kim Cohen is no is not attending. It's not at this point. Jill Spear. Jill Spear, library board president. President present. Our first agenda item tonight is approval of the consent and agenda with items 3 and 6AI, <clears throat> excuse me, and 6AII. I would like a motion to accept approval. I see David Brandwine has made a motion to accept approval of the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Ann Donovan has raised her hand and indicated she is second in the motion. We have a motion to approve approval of the consent agenda in a second. I'll ask uh, there's any discussion? See no discussion. And we'll now take the roll call motion. David Brandwine. David Brandwine, board member, yes. Gail Crockett. Okay. Gail, if you can unmute vote your uh, mute your phone and vote. Um I'm not doing anything, so I didn't know I was muted. Yes. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, we can. Um, Gail Crockett, board member, affirmative. Ann Donovan. Ann Donovan, library board member, yes. Okay, let the um, meeting notes show that Kim Cohen has been able to join. And Kim, we have a motion, and it's been seconded for approval of the consent agenda. Um, you have a vote? Or can you vote, Kim? Uh, yes, this is Kim. I vote in favor. Thank you. Uh, Jill Spear, Library President, yes. Thank you all. All right. Our next agenda item is the, the Chair's Report. Chair's report. Okay. First off, I'd like to welcome new board member Gail Crockett, and we're delighted to welcome Gail to the West Hartford Library Board. She brings her expertise from a lifelong career working in a variety of roles in state and local government, as well as volunteering for organizations including uh, Wasco and the Senior Job Bank. So welcome, Gail. We're delighted to have you. Thank you. 
Our next agenda, our president's part of the chair's report is, excuse me, is the library director search. Um, I'd like the uh, to make note that in the minutes that the library board recognizes the many challenges of filling um, the library director role as a key role in these unprecedented times and has a multifaceted strategy to ensure continued leadership in the West Hartford community's much loved institution. As we continue to receive and view applications for the next library director, we're working through transitions pl plans concurrently. And I want to thank um, the library director, current library director Martha Church, for helping us develop those plans. The next agenda item is old business. Uh, first item is fourth quarter library statistics. The chair recognizes uh, Martha Church to present those statistics. Martha Church, uh, library director. And um, so our fourth quarter statistics are what you would expect for a fourth quarter that began at, concurrently with the, with the beginning of the um, coronavirus pandemic and the shutdown of the physical locations, although we were able to maintain library services Throughout the period, we certainly were not measuring some of the things that we normally measure. So you will see that you know we have a lot of things in the minus column, a lot of our statistics that have gone down, but those are all things that make total sense given the um, environment that we've been currently experiencing. So uh, we are down significantly, and I'm just going to hit the, the high spots here. Obviously, visitors to all locations is down 33% from fiscal 19 to fiscal 20. That's totally understandable. Um, we have uh, an increase in the number of followers on our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter pages, and we have a significant increase in the number of newsletters viewed by email and we have that's something we noticed basically starting in April with our newsletters in April we typically send four to five newsletters a month and the number of people actually opening oh, those actually newsletters open. has increased um, and continues to remain sort of at a, 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 a much higher base level than previous to the pandemic which is good. Um, we're pleased to be reaching people through that medium. Obviously, preschool literacy program attendance is down. Our regular program attendance is down um, somewhat. It took us a while to get into virtual mode, as most of you know, um, but we are operating that way for most programs. But we're not doing the same number of programs that we had done previously. Uh, our number of loans of physical items, here's another area that you would expect, down just under 30% over the previous year. However, balance that against um, a change from fiscal 19 to fiscal 20 of 52.55% in the number of downloadable materials that have been loaned. You know, there's been an ex a real explosion of, of that change. Um, so that's a... That's an interesting statistic. Our wireless statistics are down. You know, we have a lot of people who were in our buildings using our wireless, and when they can't be in the buildings, obviously that number is going to go down. Same thing with public computer sessions. Um, our patron interactions via phone, email, or in person, we're down because we don't have the in person ones. Our statistics remain very strong in terms of the number of actual phone calls we do since we've been doing the phone um, communication center for the town. And our, we've got a little pop up in the number of people using our online research and um, database type tools. So again, that's pretty consistent. It's what you would expect. There are no real surprises in this report. One of the things that I wanted to check before I reported to you tonight was now that we've been doing the curbside pickup service and people are able to reserve and pick up the 
um, physical items again, I wanted to be sure that we weren't losing sort of market share on the um, on the on the uh, electronic materials, and we're not. The electronic materials continue to hold at the level that they had achieved. So that's that's actually a pretty good trend and, and thing that we're seeing. So we're, while we're doing, um, and I'll have more details in my in my uh, current monthly update about the curbside service, but we added curbside, we expanded back to curbside service for physical items, and yet we haven't lost the gains we've made in the electronic. In the electronic. electronic. So does anybody have any questions on that? I'll leave it back to you, Jill, to lead the. If no questions about the quarterly report, don't don't forget later in the meeting, uh, Martha will be providing the monthly report, so we can certainly ask more questions about the, the last last month's report. I, I don't see anyone raising their hands, so I think we should move on. Our next agenda item is the photography filming policy revision, and I ask that. Uh, Library Director Martha Church to discuss the proposed changes. Thank you, Martha. Library Director Martha Church. Um, so this is a policy that we have been in the process of working on basically since last February. And um, we've been through it a number of times. It's a, uh, a sort of a reworking of a previous policy that we had to try to address um, in, a, in a more clear manner situations where people might come into a library and, and film or attempt to take pictures of other library users. And we felt that the policy we had on on the books was not clear enough and we've asked for assistance with this one and we've had a number of attorneys including our own attorneys take a look at this um, so we had town corporation council two of two of that staff have have gone over this obviously kim and david are our, our board members who are attorneys have looked at it and then um, the corp council asked for some um, consultation with attorneys at Shipman and Goodwin. So the form you have it in that was sent out in your packet is, I think, ready to go. So I'll turn it back to Jill. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Martha. Um, since we've had a, um, we've had a, this over a number of months, as you've refined it with council and things, I'll um, ask if we have a motion. I see that David raised his hand. I assume that David's making a motion. David Brandwine, board member, I move that we approve the policy as revised. Do I have a second? Uh, Chair Rickey, Ann Donovan. Ann Donovan, library board member, second. Uh, any discussion? I see no discussion, no indication of discussion. So um, I guess we're ready to vote. All right, I'll call the roll. Uh, David Brandwine. David Brandwine, board member, library board member, yes. Gail Crockett. Gail Crockett, library board member, yes. Ann Donovan. Ann Donovan, library board member, yes. Kim Cohen. Kim Cohen, library board member, yes. Uh, Jill Spear. Jill Spear, Library Board Chair, yes. Uh, motion is made and passed. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Martha, for all your uh, arduous work on this in branching, especially all this, uh, especially all this pandemic. All right. Um, similarly, we have another uh, revision for uh, uh, policy, and it's the patron rules of conduct revision. So I'd like to have Martha Church at this time discuss the changes to that policy. Martha. Martha Church, Library Director. So this is a policy, again, we're, we're dealing with a policy that, for the most part, we've had on the books for quite some time. Uh, but last month, um, I asked you to turn your attention to potentially revising this and strengthening it to clarify um, 
our ability to ask that patrons using the library comply with local, uh, state, and federal guidelines with respect to health and safety issues. And clearly, this is something that's coming pretty directly out of the pandemic situation. We want to have um, some clear guidance from the board on the ability of staff to, to ask that patrons you know, socially distance and wear masks when they are in our buildings, if that is what's currently in effect in, in our local community or in the state or even nationally. Um, so at the same time that we were looking at that, we decided to take advantage of, as we do when we revise library policies, to a sort of a, a reorganization of a lot of the material that was already in the policy reordering some of the things we didn't add anything uh, in particular but we are reordering it so that they appear on the policy sort of in an order of um, importance and so some of the most important things come at the top of the, the rather extensive bullet point list and things that are um, important but less so uh, come toward the bottom so again, it's a, it's a, we, we clarified some language. Um, I'm trying to think if there, I feel like there was one thing that we actually did add, but I can't find it right off the top of my head. Um, Yes, there was a little change to damaging library property. We added something about um, intentionally um, trying to um, alter or change library software systems. Um, that was something that was not in there before. So that's another good change. Um, but basically, everything was, was in here before. So. Again, with that, I'll turn it back to Jill for any discussion or for a motion. Okay, thank you, Martha. Um, do I have a motion? David Brandwine is making a motion. I'm not shy shaking my hand. Um, David Brandwine, board member, I move we approve the policy as revised. Second. <laughs> Uh, was that you, Ann, or was that Gail? I couldn't Gail, see. Gail, it's Gail. Okay, Gail Crockett has made a second. So we have a motion to accept the policy revisions and a second. Um, is there any discussion? Oh, yes, David. So I apologize as always that I didn't really read this thoroughly until 15 minutes before the meeting. Martha, I'm sorry. Um, I have a couple of uh, word clarifications. If you go to the third bullet down, engaging in any activity in violation of federal, state, CDC, local health or safety protocols, two things. I would suggest taking out the word CDC. I mean, it's hot on everybody's mind right now, but CDC is federal and it's redundant in my view. Um, and secondly, the word protocol does not really have a legal, it's not really a legal term of art. I would suggest we insert instead of protocols the words regulations or guidelines. And then my only other comment is going down to about halfway down where it says exhibiting hygiene conditions. I think there needs to be an adjective there like adverse or poor or some other clever word. Um, because everybody <laughs> exhibits hygiene conditions. So that's those are my two comments, four comments. Any other comments? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so I thought that the issue with the CDC, David, had to do with um, if folks are required to wear face masks and they don't, if they're supposed to socially distance and they don't. I mean, people coming into the library are supposed to do those things, correct? Cor Correct, the David Brandwine Library Board member. Uh, correct, but I, I think that's covered by using the word federal. I don't think we have to say CDC. Oh. I have no problem leaving CDC in there if it makes everybody feel better right now, but I think it's redundant. 
Library Board Chair Jill Spear recognizes Kim Cohen. Kim Cohen, Library Board Member. I really don't feel strongly, but we could solve this project with including any provided by the CDC. Brilliant. Okay. Um, is that acceptable? It's library Board, I'm sorry, Library Board. Chair Jill Spear, is that acceptable to adopt that phrasing? David? Grand Wine Library Board Member, always the, the diplomat, I accept um, Kim's friendly revision. Okay. Ditto. Are there any other uh, points to be made? Ditto. Yes, Martha I have Church another. Recognizes, I'm sorry, Martha Church. One second, Gail. Well, I, I want to know. So David suggested a change to the from protocols to either regulations or guidelines. Does someone want to voice a strong opinion about one of those words? David Branwine, library board member. To me, I wrote federal regulations for six years for, for a federal agency. The word protocol has no meaning. Uh, okay. I would use regulations. Guidelines also is a, I don't know if Kim, if, if Kim wants to give an opinion on this. Um, because the, C, the CDC um, statement on maps i'm not sure is not a regular i don't think it's a regulation um and i don't know if it's a guideline i think this kim cohen library board member um i would include guidelines just because i think it's a lower standard so in it's more protective of you if you want to point to something and say we've made this rule or this is the standard because so and so says so i think that using the word guidelines gives you a little bit more um room to consider guidance that's out there. Um, any discussion on that? Before we go off um, that particular uh, uh, example that's in the, uh, that's in the uh, thing, uh, the chair recognizes, Gail, were you going to add a comment on that particular line as well? No, I was moving to the um, Gail Crockett Library Board member. I was moving to David's comment about adverse. Okay, so let's. So before we take that, I'll hold hold on that thought. Library board chair Joyce Chair Martha. Um, what I'd like to do is take these one by one so we have clarity. So would you? Uh, do you happen to have notes enough to read back that uh, proposed changes to that particular example? Library board recognizes Martha Church. Martha Church, library board director. So this is the. Proposed revision to bullet number three, as I've taken the notes. Engaging in any activity in violation of federal, state, or local health and safety guidelines, including those from the CDC. Um, Library Board uh, Chair uh, recognizes Kim Cohen. Kim, were you? Um, uh, were you thinking that to be federal and at that point say including CDC since the CDC is a federal agency? What were you thinking how that would be worded? I think yes, that probably is where it makes the most sense, but I don't think it matters. That's okay. As you say, always diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So Martha, uh, Chair recognizes Martha, can you read it one more time and then we'll read We'll do a kind of mini vote on that just because you know it's difficult in our Brady Bunch squares here. Okay, Martha, can you read it again? Chair recognizes Martha Church. Martha Church, Library Board Chair. I'm going to read it with that um, phrase moved to the placement that Kim had just suggested. So, engaging in any activity in violation of federal including the CDC, including the state or local health and safety guidelines. And I have an opinion, which is that that's awkward, but that's, the, that's an English teacher, not a lawyer. This is Kim, library board member. I think that that's fine. I might say guidelines and regulations. I don't know that it means anything, but I think both is probably better. And I 
don't I couldn't tell in your delivery was including the CDC in parentheses because maybe that makes it slightly less awkward. Oh, you're muted, Martha. I will do whatever the board chooses to do. <laughs> diplomatically. Jill Spear, so here, you guys are so polite to each other. Here's what I suggest. Here's what I put, including CDC right behind federal in parentheses. It makes it less awkward. I do believe that Kim is suggesting that we, we really do need to say regulation and guidelines since uh, there seems to be a quandary currently about some of those things and that that would be acceptable. So I hate to do you th this to you, Martha, but can you just <laughs> read it one more time? <laughs> The beauty of being a librarian, you can read. Um, so, Martha Church, library director. One more time. Engaging in any activity in violation of federal, including CDC, state or local health and safety guidelines and regulations. All right. Um, this is not a real vote for the whole whole things, but if everybody could just give me a thumbs up or down, that that's good for that we're in enough discussion on that item. Okay, I see everybody's thumb up. So we're good for that one. Um, can we move on to the other items that, uh, well, the items that, the ones that David brought up? Okay, so Martha, can you um, read us the next one? Chair recognizes Martha Church. Martha Church, Martha. library director. So this is so, bullet one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Bullet twelve. Currently reads exhibiting hygiene conditions, including but not limited to offensive and pervasive clothing or body odor, insects or pests or with unsanitary belongings that interfere with the use and enjoyment of the library by others or with the functioning of library staff. David's library. suggested amendment is that exhibiting adverse hygiene conditions, including what I just read. Oops, Chair recognizes Dave Brandwein. David Brandwine, library board member. In this case, I defer to the English teacher rather than the lawyer. What do you like, Martha? Chair, this is Martha. Li library board director, Martha Church. Uh, library director, <laughs> Martha Church. Um, I, I, I actually like the addition. I think it's clearer to, to put the adjective in there. All right. So what I would so I, I would I would I suggest that you do that. All right. So can we do a thumbs up or down on this new wording? I have a question. Okay, Gail. Chair recognizes Gail Crockett. Thank you, Gail Crockett, Library Board member. So with respect to the word adverse, how who and uh, how do you determine? I mean, who makes the judgment call that my uh, lotion that I have on my skin to keep my hives away and offensive or whatever. I mean, okay, the chair recognizes uh, library director Martha Church to explain how it's enforced. And Martha, you might use the um, the new say the the new uh, relationship to health and safety is one thing, but this also goes to um, offensiveness as well. So if you could explain how you explained it to us before previous meetings. I think you're on mute, Martha. Sorry, Martha Church Library Director. Um, it's a good question, Gail. Typically what it happens is that staff will receive a complaint from another patron, particularly when it, it, it re with regard to odor. Um, and certainly strong perfumes or lotion odors can be offensive to some people, but that's a, I, I almost don't remember that ever happening. Uh, this is far more likely to be the case of somebody who has unwashed clothing or um, we have certainly had in the past patrons who come to us um, with incontinence issues and 
and the like, and those are the things that cause the problems that, that are most likely to be brought to our attention. So um, a staff member might notice such a thing. Most patrons, if it's simply a heavy perfume situation or a, or a lotion, will move away. Um, it's the, it tends to be the person who's coming to spend a long period of time with us. Um, some of these folks may be homeless or, or those experiencing homelessness and are spending large portions of time in one location in the building, which makes it hard for anyone else to use materials in that area or to sit in those locations. I'm not sure that answers your question, Gail, but let me know if, if I can be more clear. Well, I think I understood, Gail Crockett, library board member, I think I understood that as you explained it. I was dealing more with the enforcement. Right. So in Fort Martin, Martha Church, library board director, enforcement is, this is a, a situation where staff will often consult with each other. Um, they're encouraged in most enforcement of pa patron rules and of conduct to consult, um, to get another staff member. And because odors can be a subjective thing, we will often use two or three staff members to sort of try and unobtrusively swing through the area and see if, if um, others read the situation in the same way. Uh, then depending on how, you know, where, what else is going around in the area around the patron? We will attempt to call the patron to a more private uh, location so that, and again, usually two staff members, senior staff, generally speaking, your staff will have a conversation with that person, usually with the rules in with the printed copy of the rules in their hands to point out that that person is you know, we've, that, that there is an issue and a problem. I will say that um, the last time we had to do this, which is a number of years ago now, it was a, someone who's, um, you know, didn't have ready access probably to um, the ability to wash clothes and take a shower. And the staff members who handled it had knew the person by name was able to have a you know a, actually a, a perfectly uh, reasonable conversation reasonable. about it double conversation left for the day and returned the next day having showered having laundered the clothes and presented himself in front of that staff member to say that you know, have, is, is everything okay now and she was able to say yes, and you know we consider that actually a, a kind of a big win because he he has not been a problem yeah. since. I, um, the library right. board chair Jill Spear, I'd like to just make two comments about the um, policy in general, and it's a general comment about the policies that the po purpose of our pol board policies is to provide a framework for the librarians and the library staff to um, execute procedures. And if you if you scroll to the bottom, uh, it talks about their the duties of the library staff to enforce so these are examples they're not rules in this particular case these patron uh old whatever they're 20 of them or so are all examples and it's to provide the, the policy itself is around them but those are examples to help the staff understand and, and um interpret the rules but then the procedure is what martha just described and my second point i'd like to make is that and Martha is, you know, it's uh, something I feel like you guys do a really great job on is um, the library staff works in conjunction with town social services and refers out. So it's not, how can I say, it's not punitive. Recognition of a, a need. Um, so you're saying, saying adverse hygiene conditions may May really be an ex exhibition or exhibiting an actual social need, and the staff can then intercede and reach out and and help that person connect with social services, which is actually ends up being a good thing for more than the other patrons who might have been complaining. It's actually a good thing for the person. So 
that's just background. I think that's important to understand. These are not black and white. They're a framework, and you have procedures for them. Obviously, the like Martha said, the, the examples go in order of like the law, health and safety, and then those that have to deal with atmosphere or impact on other patrons that are not in terms of health and safety. I should have added destruction of property, which is somewhere up there with the law. Library Board Chair recognizes Martha Church. Martha Church, Library Director. And just again, um, since Gail's new with the board, I, the, the bullet number one, that interfering with another patron's use of the library or with library staff in the performance of their duties is kind of the overarching concept that these are directed to um, under underpin or support. So the, the goal is to have everybody be able to use the library safely, comfortably, and and um, so when we have a situation that develops where it's not safe or it's not comfortable uh, for all for reasons that are significant. You know, we don't want to say I'm not comfortable because I don't like the cut of his gym there, that man that's, you know, sitting next to me and there's nothing specific. There has to be a specific behavior that is interfering with somebody else's use of the library. If I'm in there on my laptop and I'm playing my, you know, my movie that I happen to be watching and I have the volume cranked way up and the people sitting around me cannot focus or concentrate because my volume is too high. Well, that's something that we would hope a patron would come to staff. Again, staff would assess the situation and attempt to deal with it by asking the person to reduce the volume to a level that, that doesn't interfere with somebody else's use of the library. So um, I hope that helps Gail clarify for you sort of where these are, where they've come from and, and what they're attempting to to address yes go crack it library board member thank you all right um let's see that was the hygiene one there was the uh the, the health and safety cdc federal one and i'm sorry lost track in the detailed discussion whether there was a third point a third one of the um points no that was it. All right. So uh, if there's not any other discussion, do we have a motion to approve the amended sentences as Martha read, you know, the whole thing with the inclusion of those? I see a motion from uh, Kim Cohen. Our chair recognizes Kim Cohen. Kim Cohen, library board member. I need the motion. Is there a second? Second. Gail Crockett, library board member. We have a motion. And a second, as any other discussion? All right, the chair will now uh, call the roll for uh, David Branwine. David Branwine, library board member, yes. Gail Crockett. Gail Crockett, library board member, yes. Ann Donovan. Ann Donovan, library board member, yes. Kim Cohen. Kim Cohen, library board member, yes. Uh, Jill Spur, Library Board Chair, yes. All right, thank you all. And I want to thank Martha. I know you put a lot of time working with your staff and looking at other libraries to refresh this and put it in line with the American Library Association. So it's not a small thing. So thank you very much for the effort. All right. Our next agenda is the director's report. And the chair recognizes, oh, excuse me, the current monthly brief, excuse me, excuse me. And the chair recognizes. Director Martha Church present the monthly briefing. Martha? Martha Church, Library Director. Just one sort of final to finish up the, the um, discussion of our, of our two policies that she just voted on to approve. Um, I just want to point out to you that we, these two policies, we have now been in the past four years or so, we have been through just about every, I think every library policy has now been revised within the last three to four years. And I thank you all for your attention to that. Um, you know, it's it's an ongoing process. It 
Some of them are very easy, as you may remember, it's, it's simple to do them and some of them are, are a little more challenging. So um, thank you. And a new director may walk you through it all again. <laughs> Um, so, for, as far as my current monthly um, briefing, um, I want to bring you up to speed on where we are um, at this point, July 27th. Here we have the month of July. We continue to handle um, calls for the town, other town departments. They have gone back. Uh, staff in other town departments are now in the office. Um, at about 50% capacity. And uh, we expected that, that we would see start to see a, a reduction in the number of calls that the library staff are handling on behalf of those other town departments. To date, that isn't really happening. We have asked the town to make some changes to their web page, um, which was directing people immediately to the library's phone numbers. We now have asked them to put up a, a there's a pop up box that comes when you hit the town web page that suggests that they call if they know the department they want, they call that department first and that they only call the library number if they're unclear about what department it is they need. And so we're watching that closely because it does take an enormous amount of time. We had um, a 50% increase from May to June in the call volume for other departments, and then another 50% increase from June to this far in July. So we're, it's a lot of calls, um, sometimes over 500 a day. And that's a lot of calls for, for library staff to be handling. Granted, with curbside service, a number of those do have to do with people trying to reach us, but there's still heavy, heavy traffic of calls coming in for other town departments. So I will continue to keep my eye on that and we will continue to try and work with the team to make adjustments so that library staff can start to turn their attention a little bit more exclusively back toward library business. Our curbside service um, as of this morning is going extremely well. We've done a total of uh, 4,000 627 curbside appointments. That was at midday today since June 8th. Um, so over six weeks or seven weeks, actually, we've, we've done about, it's it's well over 650 um, um, uh, curbside appointments per week. We've actually added more capacity. We originally started this program thinking that our maximum capacity was about 600 in all, across all three locations. And we've added additional pickup slots to, um, because we felt we had the capacity to do that. So uh, that means that people are getting their materials, they're getting them in a timely fashion. Um, all staff is really pitching in to, to help with that service. And we've had a lot of very, very positive feedback. People are thrilled to be able to finally have a physical book in their hands. So we're very happy about that. Um, as I told you earlier, our online usage, I was watching to see if once the curbside kicked in, we'd see a reduction in the amount of um, materials that were being checked out in the electronic platforms. That has not happened that's holding very steady. So I think we've, and this is a wonderful thing. We, this whole experience, one of the silver linings is that we have trained people that we have these other collections and that there are other ways to access library materials. It doesn't always have to be a, a physical item. And um, we're really thrilled about that. I think it's, it's a, a really positive thing for libraries in general and certainly for the West Hartford Public Library. We continue to issue new cards, um, adding about 100 a month, um, brand new cards. That's people who didn't have a card, at least not within the last couple of years. We've also, again, continued to update cards. There are people coming back to us who have you know, been not using a library for a while and choosing to now find things that they want to do. Um, with that, so that's 
I don't I don't think we've missed a day yet where we haven't added at least two or three cards and sometimes upwards of, you know, five or six or ten in a given day. So that's a, a great thing. Um, our library website, uh, that's a little bit of a problem, problematic situation um, because the town on the 1st of July switched over to a new vendor for the library for their for the town website and that's the same vendor that had provided our library website and was hosting both sites and in spite of the fact that I had asked about that prior to the to the switch um, and and been assured that we would not have a problem we a problem has developed there something happened and um, the content management portion of our website has developed um, a problem, which means that we can't, our staff cannot get in to edit our own pages. So our pages are um, becoming increasingly out of date and we are working with the vendor, the, the old vendor to, to rectify that problem. Um, my IT staff have a phone call tomorrow with the person from the vendor who supposedly is the expert. So I will keep you informed about that. In the meantime, um, with support from the Library Foundation, we are pushing ahead with our new website. Um, the town had you know, suggested as they made the switch to, to their new website that you know, we would be in line for that after they did the town website. And so nothing had really happened except that we had quietly in the background um, tried to solicit their input and work with them to um, decide whether or not the new vendor they had chosen for the town and the schools was going to be a suitable vendor for us. And um, we don't believe that they are. We believe we need a, a web developer who is specifically geared toward libraries and the needs of libraries and library users because it, it, people use websites in all kinds of different ways. And ours is not simply a marketing tool, but, but also an information resource. And we, we need it to function in specific ways. So we are pushing ahead with our new vendor and um, hopefully we will have some resolution that allows us to get to a point a little later on this fall where we actually can launch our own new website and no longer be in this particular fix. So that's a, a piece of sort of challenging news. Um, David, you have a question? Yeah, thank you, Martha. David Brown, Library Board member. Um, so do I understand correctly that, that no library staff or town staff can make no any staff. edits now to the library website? That is correct um, as of today. Uh, we, we had some limited functionality and now we don't even seem to have that. Uh, but again, we are working with them and I, and I have to credit my my staff, both our webmaster, Maura Boudreau, and our um, IT librarian, Genevieve Francis, have been working on this very hard and long, long two-hour phone calls. They've helped the vendor identify what we, where we think the problem is. Um, the vendor has tried a number of fixes, but they claim that they're expert was on vacation last week he's back this week and they have a phone call set up he's out in california that's another part of the challenge um but they have a phone call set up tomorrow and again we're hopeful that when he's back on site with now the information that jen and maura have about what they believe to be the actual problem he'll be able to to make some resolution to that David Brandwine, library board member, please please thank the, the two people you mentioned. Um, I, I know them, I know how hard they're working on this. Um, and I'm sure it's unbelievably frustrating to them as to well as to everybody else that we don't have a functioning library website right now. So good luck. Thank you. 
So to continue the report, I want to tell you a little bit about outreach. Outreach, this is a positive thing, and you might think that in the and in a COVID pandemic situation, you might be less able to do outreach except what you can do virtually. But um, we are repurposing with their permission some funding that we had from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving for Facts and Fun. And we have bought books, um, nutmeg books and books that would be suitable summer reading for, for various elementary age um, and middle school age students, and Carol Waxman, our beloved children's librarian, and Pramod Pradhan, our community um, engagement librarian, have been going to the school grab and go lunch sites. And so they visited Whiting Lane and then um, the Hillcrest Na Neighborhood Outreach Center last week, and they have um, two or three more visits that they're making, I believe, Charter Oak and um, Smith, and I can't remember what the last one is, um, this week. And as the children come to receive their grab-and-go lunch, they're given a book, a, 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 bag, a paper bag that has a brand new paperback book in it. It carries a book plate that says that it's provided with funding from the Hartford Foundation and the West Hartford Library. Um, so, and I'm told um, that the children and their parents are just thrilled and ecstatic. And these are homes and children where frequently there, there may not be a lot of books at home. That they, They're used to getting their books from the library and having to bring them back. So for a child to own a book is something very special. We also had some special. books that were donated um, by the state library to libraries around the state uh, at an earlier point in time, actually, I think pre-pandemic. Pre and um, we have donated those to uh, Leisure Services, which is running a um, program in the parks called Game On, which are a, a tent situation in, in, the pub, in the public parks where public families parks. can go during the day, play some games, do some crafts. And again, we have these books, which are given to the children if they choose to take them. So. Uh, that's another way that we're trying to get books into the hands of these children. So that's our outreach this summer. Um, we are planning to expand our service starting in August, and I'm not, I don't have a firm date yet, although that's the question du jour. Um, and we want to go first to computer use by appointment at the Noah Webster Library. And sure. that once we get our feet wet with that and see how we can manage the, the movement of people in and out of the building, we would look to expand that to general browsing, including using copiers and scanners, and expand it out to the branch situations. So we're going cautiously because that is the, the way the town is moving on this kind of service. Um, and we want to continue to move in that direction. And so to that end, that direction. all the plexiglass shields around the service desks at the Noah Webster Library were installed last week. And um, that's terrific. I think staff are feeling very much more secure about how interactions with patrons will go because each desk is, is very well protected now by plexiglass shields. So that in addition to wearing a mask and we've gotten some um, plastic face shields to go along with that. So staff will, will have those tools to use when they are dealing with people. And of course, we'll keep the numbers low. We're adding the directional signage and signage that, that indicates where to stand while you're waiting for service. So the six feet markers. Um, are being added and, and all staff has had the opportunity to kind of walk through, we placed them, we haven't stuck them down, but we want to have everybody have a chance to kind of walk the building with those things in mind and, and have a sense of how they think it'll work that way. If anybody sees a potential problem, we'll know about it before we actually physically put the markers on the carpets. Um, 
Our Zoom room has been completed and uh, we've used it for a number of staff meetings. I used it last week for our library book discussion meeting. Um, I was the only one in the room, <laughs> but they were all on Zoom and they could see that I was in the room where we often do that, that particular discussion group. And I think that made everybody feel like things were a little bit more normal. So um, it's, Fantastic technology, easy, easy to use. Um, you know, you, the, the person running the meeting can control the camera or you could hand that off to somebody else. It's all controlled from a touchpad and we can move that camera around the room. The camera right now is not quite wide angle enough and the, the um, company is coming back, I believe, Thursday and we hope they'll have the new camera to install that will be the, the wider angle that should allow us to get the whole room in a picture. So that's that's a pretty exciting thing. And we've had a lot of talk on staff about what other programs would benefit from, from being um, operated from that particular perspective. We're thinking of things like um, some of our English um, conversation classes and uh, some of the programs that Promote has done previously at, in the meeting room, the, the ones where We've had um, immigrants come to tell their stories, their immigration stories, and that's one we do with the Golden Door Immigration Center. And he worked, and I discussed this afternoon. The Zoom room might be a really appropriate place because it's small enough where we can have the, the storytellers together in the room, and everybody attending can be on Zoom and watching. So that's going to be terrific. We have started to bring a few of our part timers back, and I to the staff we're doing this in a very very gradual way um, it's it's a little bit like trying to add hot liquids to to beaten eggs when you're cooking I don't want to scramble the eggs so we're doing it you know kind of a teaspoonful of hot water at a time and um, we've got a couple of our pages back in the mix and that is extremely helpful in terms of materials handling we have the folks that are handling our mail and our magazine check-in are all back um, working, again, staggered and limited schedules. So working slowly toward increasing that number of people, adding kind of a, a person or two at a time. So um, that's kind of it for the report on what's going on and what to expect in the, in the next couple of weeks. And I'll turn it back to Jill so that if anyone has questions uh, or things, topics I didn't cover, you can you can ask your question through Jill. Thank you, Martha. That was that was really wonderful. Uh, do we have some follow up questions? Seeing people shaking their head. All right. So let's see. Before um, Janet, I just want to verify that. Um, now, our next library board meeting is the August optional meeting. And at this point, we haven't canceled that yet. Um, there would be some discussion of possible, that would be our last meeting possible with Martha in August, and there may be some items arise. So what I'm proposing is that we leave it on the agenda, or not the agenda, on the calendar at this point. It is an optional meeting, and we always could also hold obviously a special meeting at any um, at any point during the time the six weeks Martha has left with us um, and there is some work we will need to do with transition um, planning um, so that may not work with that time frame. so I guess I'm alerting the board that we we may have a meeting it may not happen on the standard meeting it certainly will not happen on the standard time because we're running these as all special meetings with council at council's recommendation um, and we will let you know within the next couple of days where we think the status of that is. Does that work for everybody? What I'm going to do is solicit um, potential vacation times. Maybe you're all staycationing anyway. <laughs> but, uh, I'll, I'll solicit that. And uh, Martha's already provided us with some of you know her availability. But clearly, the clock is ticking here. Six weeks to go, right? So uh, Janet, um, did you resolve your issue? And you can hear us and see us now, right? Thank you. All right, thank you very much, everyone. So if there's no other discussion, um, uh, I'd like to have a motion to adjourn the meeting. 
I move to adjourn. Uh, Anne Donovan, Chair, recognize Anna Donovan, I think it was, was it Anne? Yeah, Anne Donovan, board member, second. Thank you, was the first by Kim or by Gail? I couldn't. Gail, I'm sorry, I forgot to say my name. Gail Crockett, Library Board member. Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, and it was seconded by Ann Donovan. Is there any discussion? If not, I'll call the roll. Uh, David Brandwine. David Brandwine, Library Board member, yes. Gail Crockett. Gail Crockett, Library Board member, yes. Ann Donovan. Ann Donovan, Library Board member, yes. Kim Cohen. Cohen. Kim Cohen, Library Board member, yes. Jill Spear, Library Board Chair, yes. With that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for your attention and good work, Martha. <laughs> yeah. Kara, we'll see you at our next meeting.